It's time for the dish. You wouldn't know it by the background, but Horse Racing Nation is in a new office in downtown Louisville. Paddock Prince David Levich, I believe, is in his same abode near my neck of the woods, Oldham County. But David, we're going to Ben Salem, Pennsylvania this week. It's Pennsylvania Derby Day at Parks. Yeah, it turned out to be, I mean, I don't know about the cotillion. She might be a little bit of a walkover. We can talk about <laughs> it in a minute. Um, but the Pennsylvania Derby came up an in interesting race. There's no killers of the three-year-old division in there, but there's some up-and-comers, Dragoon Guard and some other horses, Strongholds Back, who won the um, prep at Santa Anita, the grade one for the Derby this year. So there's some good um, horses in there. But it's an overall – oh, and you got Next. Next is in there. Not the uh, three-year-old races, obviously, but the marathon race again. Right. It's probably going to be one to 100. But somehow – they got. <laughs> did they get 10 horses in there? They got somehow 10. Got... That was actually, to me, the – you know, we'll get to the, the stars. You, you mentioned them, but – you know, to me that they got seven to go against Torpedo Anna, who is going to be one to five. And then they got nine to go against next, who also I would imagine is going to be one to five or thereabouts. Uh, I mean, look, we get these excuses all the time in Kentucky, California, and New York, like, oh, well, it's a four horse field, but you got the best horse in the division. Well, two of the best horses in their respective division showed up here and they got seven and nine to go against them. So, as, you know, as much as I hate on park sometimes, I have to say good job at the entry box. Yeah, no, they did well. I, I don't watch parks enough, so I can't hate on parks, but it is a unique track, that's for sure. That's the one thing that scares me a little bit about the Torpedo in off that hard race and the Travers. It's kind of a – I don't maybe it's just in my head, but I feel like it's kind of – it has – the rail can be dead there. I don't know. It's kind of goofy and horses sometimes run races there that they never run again. And it's going to be interesting to see how she does off such a hard race, because if her figure, I don't know if you believe it or not, if you're a buyer person, I know you're not a huge buyer person, but it was on 111. That's about 16, I think points better than her last or whatever it was. So if you're a bounce person, she's run a lot of races, but I mean, even if she bounces to a 90 or 94, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how she's still probably not going to lose. Yeah, I'm looking, just trying to see what the the weights are. I mean, even the she's low weight. She's 126. So is Power Squeeze, though. Uh, and then everyone else is either 122 or 124. So, I mean, yeah, a few pounds here or there, but nothing where you'd be like, oh, well, maybe 10 pounds can make a difference because that's not in play. The, the one thing I, I'll say about her that – not saying she'll be worth a bet, but that I'm, um, you know, maybe it's just a pass if you don't want to go against her at all. The, the consistency has been very impressive. Uh, and to run a race like she did in the Travers, off uh, what we've seen since the Oaks, uh, I think it's part of what makes her so tough and people are willing to take a short price. But, I mean, we've seen horses lo losing these spots all the time. I, I wouldn't be too eager to, to take one to five, if I'm being honest. Well, her only bad race, if you want to call it that, was back in November when she ran on 15 days of rest. She ended up losing, I think it was the Goldenrod. I think she, uh, yeah, she won at Churchill on November 10th and then lost the Goldenrod 15 days later, which is a quick turnaround for yeah. horses these days. So I think that's really, that's really only been her subpar, only subpar race. I mean, I'm not going to be running to do anything in this race either. I think Mystic Lake is a little interesting, the Safi horse. I don't, I don't know if she can get two turns, but. It seems like she – I know she got two turns to Charlestown. That's not – it's two turns, but that doesn't really count. <laughs> now, it wouldn't count that going a mile on a 16th, obviously, is the same kind of way of two turns. I think Mystic Lake is going to try to – Mike Smith is not afraid to use speed on horses. And I don't know. I don't really – I'm not a big fan the outside, of outside, she sort of has to go anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a huge fan of power squeeze. I know she won the Alabama – I thought Candied was best. She got her stride knocked off a little bit in the lane. And Power Squeeze is one of those horses, probably a true, I don't want to say a true 10 furlong horse because not a lot of them are, but I think of all the <laughs> horses that were in that race, um, I think she was the one that could handle it the best, and she got the job done. She beat the Mod Horse in there too back. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a huge Power Squeeze fan. I was kind of more interested to see if Mystic Lake could get brave out there and if you – player underneath under torpedo anna that's the two i was kind of looking at at quick glance so far i'd probably say the the mott horse for me only because and this is anecdotal i don't have any numbers to back this up but I, I, 
in general, I just sort of like these horses that, I mean, she's been six to five. She was seven to 10 uh, in the Delaware race, which was her stakes debut. But, you know, to me, from Mott, like that just really speaks to thinking this one has a lot of talent. She's taking that kind of money. If this were a mile and eighth, I'd be really interested uh, because it just seems like given her breeding and, you know, the, the style of what Judd Mott and Mott, you know, bring to the table, she's going to be better when she gets to stretch out. Kind of surprised maybe she wouldn't be in a race like the Spinster, which is sponsored by Judd Mott. But uh, she's, I don't want to say dangerous here. I mean, I think Torpedo Anno clearly the one to beat. But if this one ends up being like third or fourth choice instead of second, maybe there's something you can do with her. Well, I think she's not going to the Spencer because of um, her stablemate suing. Not stablemate. Um, the Cox filly. Idiomatic's going there. Oh, so, she, okay. Yeah, yeah I think sense. she's going there. So they probably don't run her. And if you're wondering why she missed, she got sick for the Alabama. She was going to run in the Alabama, and I think she got a fever or something. I remember reading. But she did beat Just Basking in her second start, who's won the Iowa Oaks. So she's beat some good horses. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see her stretch out. But eight and a half is not nine. So... You know, maybe no, it's a, not. a little short for her against these, but she being won't be by Arrow Gate too. Yeah, I mean, she'll probably be the fourth or fifth choice in here as well because you're going to think Power Squeeze will take money. Safi might take, yeah, maybe third or fourth choice. Bit. Yeah, I mean, when there's a one to five, if if you genuinely have an alternative, you're going to get your price. But uh, exactos will be interesting to look at. Yeah, I, I mean, I think Torpedo Anna lays over the field. It's just there's always yeah, the question. No, they're they're asking a lot. I mean, I, this is racing. I'm not saying they shouldn't be here, but you know, the, it's a legitimate challenge to come back in a race like this off the Travers, no doubt. Uh, Pennsylvania agree. Derby, uh, you know, he totally burned me in the Preakness, but you know, to me, even as the third or fourth choice in here, I see sees the Gray's name, and I immediately think take out reducer. Uh, so glad. He's taking a shot here, but not for me. Uh, the two logicals on the morning line make sense, but as you and I talked about before we stopped recording, there's there's another one in here who figures to be lower than his odds in unmatched wisdom. Yeah, unmatched wisdom's a tough read for me because his maiden win was good. He beat a horse in Military Road who's like a known maiden at this point for Coleman. I think he came back to <laughs> – I think he's lost maybe twice since that race. I know he lost at like one to five closing weekend at Saratoga. He's like the uh, East Coast Miramati. He well, Miramati is a slower. This horse, a military road would beat or would beat Miramati easily. Unmatched wisdom has actually lost three times. He's 0 for seven now with four seconds and three thirds. So unmatched wisdom beat him. Then he beat Grandpa's kid, who's a borderline claimer in his second start. And then he walked the dog in the curlin and beat a sugar horse who ran up the track in the Travers like unmatched wisdom did. So. I don't know. I'm a buyer's person. I don't really know if I believe his buyers that much. I, I I think it was more circumstantial type stuff. And I don't know what his best right. trip is going to be because they said he was going to rate in the Travers and he needed a rate. Well, he hated rating. Like he was not a comfy behind hard, horses. Yeah. yeah, he was not having fun being, I don't want to say strangled back because it was instructions, but he did not have a lot of fun taking dirt. I'm guessing with Pratt back on, he's going to have him very forward right on the pace, probably sitting off Dragoon Guard. Um, but I don't know. I mean, he's probably going to be four to one in here. I would think nine to two. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I do think the top three choices in the line will be the top three. So yeah, I mean, five or six to one, I guess. The interesting horse. I mean, Dragoon guard's going to be, he's nine to five on the line, but I could see him being as low as even money. Yeah, he's a tough read, too, because Cox has kind of handled him with training wheels, if you want to say. He's never right. really – he's kind of just moved – basically moved them up to condition. He broke his main, beat his non-winners a one, went to an Indiana Derby where he did beat Stronghold. Stronghold did not have a good trip in that race. And then he went to the West Virginia Derby. So he avoided the Jim Dandy, he avoided the Haskell, he avoided the Travers. So it's kind of like he was kind of handling with care to try to get him to this grade one to run his best shot. He does have speed. Cox won this race last year. Sorry, he Crown? Win? Yeah, did he win with – um? Was that two what years horse, ago? What was the horse that won the Haskell, the Al Gold horse that beat – um? oh, my goodness, the chestnut horse. I'm drawing a blank. Maybe he didn't run in this race a couple years ago. I was thinking he won it the last two years. But, yeah, no, Cox has done well in this race, won it last year. 
Um, yeah, I was gonna look it up and put in the wrong thing. I can't anyway, that yeah, point. I mean, wherever he points to, we you know we all know Brett. I think he's just gonna be too short a price. Uh, one horse I thought like I keep waiting for the breakthrough and it, it's never come, and we'll see what kind of price he is. I mean, it was eight to five in the Smarty Jones, which is shameful. So I didn't play him that day, but I liked him a little bit in the Ohio Derby, uh, Uncle Heavy. I mean, does he have a, a break? Can he run faster than we've seen? Or at this point, do we just sort of know what he is? Well, I'm going to be honest. I liked this horse in the Preakness, and he was no bueno. <laughs> and he was very overbet in that race, too. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, almost eight, just under eight to one. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I didn't, like, love him to win, but I, I thought for sure, like, he can be there at the end and maybe crash the party, and he was nowhere. I mean, I know he didn't win last time out, but he does have two wins at parks. But it seems like his better races. I don't know. He hasn't really gone on. I, he's a good long shot, though. I mean, he has handled parks. A lot of these horses have never run at parks. So if you're one of those people that believe horses can't take their race at the parks, because it's a some, it's like things that happen at parks stay at parks sometimes. So I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a strong opinion on him. The interesting horse is Stronghold because I know yeah. he's a grade one winner, but he's never really run that fast of a race. Like he's never run that run off the page race. You're like, oh, this grade one winner's towers over the, he might be the second or third choice in here and he's a grade one winner. So I don't know what the, he's been pointing to this race. They skipped all the big races over the summer as well. So he's been, I think, the Amato Stadium. I'm always. leaning in his direction just because I do think Dragoon Guard's going to be shorter than his morning line. So what does that mean for Stronghold? But the Indiana Derby, I mean, it's off the Kentucky Derby, you know, many layoffs. It's not like he was totally on the shelf, but, you know, now comes back here. Phil D'Amato stayed loyal to the jockey, which uh, I guess you can appreciate. But rider change might be a little interesting. But I mean, just looking at the progression and then what he did in the Santa Anita Derby, I'm definitely expecting a move forward here, you know, with the time since the Indiana Derby. So with that move forward, if he gets back to the Santa Anita Derby, it's good enough to win. And I think the price will be right. So he's he's my pick, you know, pending the odds board. But you know, I, I just think there's a lot of upside there, second off the layoff. Yeah, no, I'm with you on him. I, I think I would rather have him than Dragoon Guard and um, Unmatched Wisdom. There's two other horses I mentioned real quick. This yeah. is weird to say, but if Protective did not run his last race and he was coming off that good race and that maiden race where he lost to that very good Tom Morley horse, I think I would like him more. But he was he won his last race in that off the turf, but he was not very good. Like he <laughs> he he should have won by eight lengths, and he was hanging on for dear life. But he is an accomplishment. You know, a horse that's only won one race came third in the Peter Pan, third in the Wood, but his last race bothered me a little bit. I don't know because his yeah. races were so one, strong. One before. to twenty against three others. Um, you know, in a, in a big field when you're the heavy favorite, it's I don't mind as much. Like off the turf, it too. super impressive. But yeah, in that spot off the turf in a short field, like that is not a one to twenty performance. And there's one other horse I want to mention in here. Timeout. So this horse, oh gosh, I forgot about this. And his maiden, he beat Military Road, who just keeps coming <laughs> back in this race. So maybe I shouldn't like this horse. But he had no chance in the curling against Unmatched Wisdom when he just wired the field. And then last time out, he lost to Game Warden, who was two for two at Saratoga. But that was an older race. So he was facing older. Now he gets back in. He's going to get more pace. Looks like Mott thinks he has real upside. They could have gone for the non-1X again. Just right. like protective, I guess, but they want to face their own age, and it's a grade one. So I think he's a little interesting. At a yeah, I haven't peeked at the sheets yet, but I'm I'm Brisnet. You know, Uncle Heavy throughout their protective, even unmatched wisdom. But I'm I'm Brisnet. Timeout uh, is faster than them. Uh, Mid nineties speed ratings. What's the buyer situation? He has run consistent low nineties, ninety one, ninety two, ninety five, and has made in. Right. I mean, compared to Dragoon Guard, who's 91, 91, 91. So if you're going to be a buyer person in this race, timeout has run faster than the projected favorite. I mean, Unmatched Wisdom has the best buyers in this race by far, 99s, 96, 98s. Mm -hmm. It's just they were with easy circumstances. I'm not right. a – I got to see it against – No, real... and I mean, timeout's uh, style, I think, fits this race because there's, there's plenty in here. Uh, you sort of have the two-tier – Speed is what I think of it. I mean, you have horses that like to be on or near the lead, and then you clearly have the immediate pressers um, that are 
like no one's going to get away with an easy lead with that type of setup and then timeout sort of in that third tier. So up to Rosario to get the trip and make the move at the right time. But yeah, this, this horse makes sense to me. You know who protective is out of, I forgot about this. Grace Hall. What races did she win? Oh, uh, was that a, uh, Delaware Oaks. Oh, it was a Anthony Dutra or Indiana Oaks, Dutra. Delaware okay. Oaks. I was, I was about Oaks. to say Larry Jones, but Dutra. She won the spin away too. Wow. I forgot about, forgot right. about her. And what you, you didn't say any, I mean, I slid off with sees the grays, a takeout reducer. Do you I agree? don't, I'm not, I'm no. Yeah. I'm not. Just, I mean, the, if you go back and look, the Pat Day Mile has turned out to be a brutal race. <laughs> and the Preakness might even be worse. Oh, I mean, the Preakness is. I mean. Man. Which is interesting. I mean, because Stronghold, his key win, Imagination was second. And it was like, oh, he came back on a Baffert. And he's been awful. Now, I EJ's picked Imagination. At least. What's that? I had two I picked in the Preakness. Yeah, me too. Uh, unfortunately, with Muth out. Or I was going to pick him even with Muth in, though. Um, but, you know, EJ's one. He's come back at least to win a couple races. So, Santa Anita Derby, not awful. But, man, the, yeah, the Preakness is. Whew. Pad Day Miles been just as bad. Nobody's done anything out of there either. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so see, happy to see him in here. We know he's going to take money, especially in the wind pool. And he's a my resource. Yeah, he's gonna get bet automatically. Right. All right. I, I think you you've talked me into timeout a little bit. I'm gonna go eleven four. Wait, I I didn't see the post. But, oh, stronghold the eleven. Yeah. 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 No, I'm definitely using timeout. I think in this race, if you're gonna try to make money in the pick fives and pick fours, you have to try to fade your goon guard. I mean, that's right. the only way this thing's gonna pay because you're gonna have next and you're gonna have. I mean, I don't know how if it's gonna pay anyways, but if you're gonna play vertical, I mean, you kind of. Horizontals, I mean, you're going to have to. Um, well, who you do you think is more likely, Torpedo Anna or Next? Next. Me too. There's that thing in my head that I could be dead wrong about, but at some point, Torpedo Anna is going to have that race where it's like, holy cow, I've run in all these races against, you know, it's good yeah. she's run, no, but I mean, it's going to happen at some point. Three-year-old Philly, and I mean, that they're at the age, too, where others in her, like the other Philly she's facing are improving, too. Yeah, and next is basically in workouts. Like he'll he's running nine furlongs and then he's sprinting home for three. Like he's not really he's just jogging and then sprinting home. He's not really even doing it. He's not even yeah. having to do anything. No. Um and, and I mean he's you know, with three year old Philly, these are the races you have to run in. Like, you know, she's yeah, she's never showing up in the Charlestown Oaks or whatever. Whereas next, obviously there's some bigger prizes they could go for if they wanted, but he is being trained for these races. Yeah. Um, and he's, you know, hasn't disappointed. I mean, he's just. Didn't they get rid of the marathon? The marathon's gone, right? It's gone. But like the, the race they made the marathon, the CCA thoroughbred in that race gone. It's a, for two year olds now. So he has to go to the classic if he runs. Yeah, I mean, that, maybe there's some overnight race they end up riding if they want him out there, but. That's what I thought. They took away that 350000 whatever the race yeah. was called. Yeah. Yeah. Used to be a Breeders' Cup marathon. That's what I said. I don't want to confuse people because the marathon's been gone a while. But right. then they made but Yeah, like they, a, they had yeah. a, you know, it was a mile and five-eighths at Keeneland, a mile mm -hmm. and three-quarters at Santa Anita. I was yeah. there last year at San Anita. That mile and three quarters with four horses with two of them finishing was whew, thrilling. <laughs> Maybe that's why, that's why it's gone. Why I don't it's remember gone. seeing you out there. I was out there. You must have had clubhouse seats. I was inside. Mm -hmm. But I walk around at San Anita a lot. San Anita is the best. Oh, it, it, I mean, I mean, I think Churchill's the best, but nothing wrong with San Anita. No, San Anita is. If you want to go to a track you've never been to. Yeah, that's, that's one you should go to. Absolutely. So while it's still around, no less. While they're all, all right, what's next those. week? The Churchill Stakes? No, next week is the Churchill Stakes, and Belmont has their whatever you want to call it, Aqueduct has their first. Um, I think the Joe Hirsch and all the two year old Breeders Cup turf races, the Pilgrim and all those are next week. So they got like four or five Breeders Cup. And the Cup Crown, races. is that next week? The Crown. 
the California. Yes, crown yes, cup? yes, 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 yes. All right. Well, we better dish then. And Santa Anita has those cool bets. They uh, that was. Yes. People were talking about how they. I didn't really read into them, but I heard they have some new good bets. Yeah, five dollar double, three dollar pick three, um, and then good. for for California Crown, they're doing you know the the two day stuff with good takeouts, right? They're not like yeah, fifteen percent. Yeah, that's what I thought. I didn't read about it a lot, but yeah, I saw that California's before. back, baby. No, they're not. <laughs> well, it's a good move. I, it I is a good the, move. I applaud the try. I agree with you. It was. Uh... Very weird Del Mar meet. The buzz was. Well, yeah, it was pretty muted after. I mean, I thought. Yeah. You know, but yeah. no, I, I hope San Anita gets back to its glory because it's one of the best. Yeah. Venues, so. All right. Well, we'll dish on it next week. I'll be ready. All right. Sounds good. He's David Lovich, Paddock Prince. Oh, park sheet this week. Oh, yeah. Parks for All sure. Right. Belmont, Absolutely Parks, like and Churchill. Hear. Parks and Churchill. All right, Saturday, picks.horseracingnation.com. Good luck.